Hi everyone. Um, I'm doing a series of discussions and, and little snapshots of different feelings what we're going through at this time of uncertainty around the world. And the first one we're going to talk about today uh, is around fear and the antidote to fear being hope. Um, obviously, this is very an uncertain time for all of us, uh, particularly as professional footballers, um, and not knowing what's ahead. So um, understanding what fear is about um, and how you can best respond to it might be best useful in these times. The first thing to do is understand fear um, and how it impacts us and how it affects us. Um, I think it's, it's all really important to know that we all kind of react and respond in different ways in these times, but it's also important to know how we individually respond to this. So fear is an emotion that links to our survival. Really, it actually helps us more than anything else. It tells us when we're, how to keep us safe, decisions we make um, that are wise to protect ourselves, um, but our bodies respond to it in a fight or flight mechanism, which is obviously, again, very helpful in terms of knowing how to survive, but also can very much narrow our thinking. Um, it stops us from kind of stepping back and seeing uh, the whole picture. Um, and that can lead us to catastrophic thoughts or denial or whatever that might be. And as athletes, you know, we really don't know what this looks like. Um, our fear is responding in very different ways. Are we concerned about... Um, the human existence and what's going to happen through this? Are we concerned about us as athletes and what's going to happen with our teams or our particular sport or, or when we might ever play again? Um, but we also might be concerned about friends and family, you know, our older ones that might be uh, most in danger in these times. So I guess what I'm suggesting here is fear can, fear can present itself in, in multiple ways. This is a time not to panic. Um, this is a time, as I said before, to step back see the bigger picture, and see if we can make concise decisions from here. So, yes, understand that we do have a fight or flight system, but how can we best settle that and move to things that just seeing what's the best way forward from here? I imagine most of us are experiencing some sort of fear in relation to COVID-19. This is an understandable response. And I think the, the significant difference about COVID itself is we have no sense of control of it. Before, when I was talking about fear being part of our survival mechanism, is a lot of the time we get to make uh, choices around what, we, what we're about to do, what we're going to do. Um, but this, this pandemic is really mostly out of our control and we've been simply told to, to stay home and keep safe. So it can feel like a very passive response in this. Um, and this creates a lot of uncertainty as well. And what uncertainty does really is not knowing when this is going to end. We can't plan for it. Um, there's no specific date placed at the end of it. Um, so that really can produce a lot of anxiety. And we're just sitting here kind of waiting for that to happen. And as athletes, we don't like that either. We're, we're used to a very structured routine. We like to know what's ahead. Um, we can start planning, you know, for our performance ahead as well. Um, COVID doesn't give us that. This could be going on for three months, six months, 12 months. Who knows? Um, so it can produce a lot of anxiety uh, in these times. So how do we transform that fear and worry and anxiety and, and how, do we, how do we get it to hope or become more hopeful to our future? And that's what hope's really about, is how do we see ahead? We believe that um, hope is the antidote to fear and can help us move forward. Mainly because once we're, fear, once we're fearful and we're in that fight or flight mode, it takes away from our values and how we want to live our life. Hope can reconnect to those values and how we want to live. Quite simply, hope is the, the desired outcome or event will occur and we can start acting in the way that um, this desired outcome will occur one day. Um, we just don't know exactly when that might be. It's being able to see the bright light when it feels like we're sinking, to know that there is a way forward and there is something to look forward to again. It's during these times of uncertainty that hope encourages us to move with a sense of optimism. Um, reconnect with the way we want to behave in pursuit of our values and goals, whether that be as an athlete or as a person or as a support person for other people in your life. But this approach also requires persistence, dedication, and the ability to overcome setbacks and unexpected challenges. Really, that, and then when I go, go through that, that's what we go through as athletes all the time, isn't it? We always have to uh, try and stay focused on what we want to achieve, but there will be setbacks along the way, and we need to be resilient and robust enough to, to overcome them. So how do we increase hope? Um, we can increase hope in, in three particular ways, in a model. Um, researcher Rick Snyder has proposed for us. It's one, 
um, identify goals in this time, two, create pathways in terms of how to get, get to those goals, and three, find agency. Um, really about how do we gain motivation this time when we feel like um, there might be little to work towards. I'll go through each one a little bit, uh, expand on each one particularly. So setting goals. Um, now these goals really are in this time where um, we're kind of bunkered down and, and maybe in lockdown in isolation. Um, and these can be goals we set as athletes, you know, things we still want to work on um, in our athletic approach. Um, but also might be, it might be things we're doing away from um, the football field. So it might be study or learning new instrument or language um, or things that we wanted to do that we never had time for. Um, but it might be more exploring those different strengths and values that we want to, uh, that we've always wanted to achieve that it kind of excite us. So we're going to pick things that actually challenge us um, but excite us. And you can see I've used the, the SMARTER acronym down below. Creating pathways, really it's about breaking down those larger goals into smaller manageable things. So how do we get to these goals every day or what are we going to do each week to, to get to those? Um, we might want to brainstorm different ways on how we're going to achieve those. So remember there's, my, there's more than one way uh, to get to that goal. And sometimes you don't know or there's a bit of a barrier. Please, it's, it's always time to ask for help. So it might be still through a coach if there's still athletic goals there. Um, it might be through other supports or teammates that you might have who can assist you with this. Um, it might be with a sports psychologist or someone on the PFA uh, psychological network you can talk to about assisting you uh, with these goals. But really it's about peeking the door open more and more to get to see the light and see a future um, that inspires us again and not feel so bunkered down in this current mode. Developing agency is, is finding ways, okay, how do we gain more motivation? Now, to me, I think one way in doing that, but in any particular goal, is working with others instead of doing it alone. Now, it's obviously a challenging time to work with other people um, because we've been told to, to stay in isolation, but we can still do this online or by text message in terms of finding a current goal we can go and achieve together, but just might be in separate environments or domains. I've just got an example here of a running goal that, of course, you could use this in any particular way. You know, as a footballer, it might be more technical than that. Um, it still might be physical, whether it be in fitness or in strength, whatever it might be. But again, let's, it doesn't have to be football. This could be learning something new. Um, it might be reading a book together. Um, it might be uh, doing a particular subject you're going through your course. Um, find different ways of motivating yourself. Another good way of finding motivation is, seeing, is reflecting on times before you've been successful. Uh, and achieved a goal, whether on or off the field. Um, or think of times where you've overcome significant challenges in your life, because this is a significant challenge for all of us. Now is also a time to think about seizing the opportunity. Um, what this little break does for however long it is, does it come, can do a few things. Um, the, although we've lost our kind of current season, it might extend our preparation for the next. So how do we get ready for that? How do we become best prepared for the season, whenever that might start again. There might be areas of development we want to focus upon. And again, using our coaches and other support networks to help us be best prepared in that. This is also a good time to use time away from sport to seek balance. I mean, a lot of time when we're in football mode, um, there feels like little time for anything else. You now's the time we can pursue those other areas we've always wanted to in life or find new routines that um, give us good balance and structure in terms of the identity of the person we are away from just being the footballer. But most of all, this is a time to, to connect um, with each other and support each other. And by doing so, if we really focus on what's ahead um, and focus on that we are gonna get through this together, um, now, you know, we can actually feel more hopeful in this time and that can instill a more positive emotion within us and gives us more to look forward to. Um, there's gonna be a little information sheet attached to this video. Um, please follow through these extra reading and points and reinforcements that I've spoken to you about today. Um, but I hope you're all well. Take care of yourself and I might see you soon.